Hi, welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. I uh, come before you today, I want to read a scripture first um, today, and that comes from Deuteronomy 26, 16-19. Today, Yahweh your Elohim is commanding you to obey these laws and rules. You must faithfully obey them with your heart and with all your soul. Today you've declared that Yahweh is your Elohim, and that you will follow His directions, obey His laws, commands, and rules, and listen to Him. Today Yahweh has declared that you are His people, His own special possession as He told you. But you must be sure to obey His commands, then He will place you high above all the other nations He has made. He will give you praise fame, and honor, and you will be a people holy to Yahweh, your Elohim, as He promised. So, in this scripture, you know, we read, um, who is Israel? You know, that's a common question that I get asked a lot, and before I went down this path, I always thought that Israel were the Jews. Until I studied more and I learned that the Jews were only called Jews because of one particular tribe, and that's the tribe of Judah. And that's kind of where, where the name uh, comes from, and you have to do a little research on that, but, you know, that, that's where that term came from. It's not really found in the Bible. But we do see Israel a lot in the Bible, because that is a biblical concept. It goes all the way back to Mount Sinai. When the people are gathered on the mountain, he calls them the congregation. And that's one of the first places you see that word used, because we are the congregation. Israel is the congregation. And you see, he has called all people. It's not just a blood lineage of people. He has called all people to this, but not everyone participates. So, he's called us all. But there are rules to this. To be a part of Israel, you've got to do his commands. You've got to follow what he says to follow. It's not just um, a birth order or anything like that. It is following his commandments. Just as the scripture we just read made it clear, if you want to be called his people, you do what he says. Which is kind of interesting because there's so much focus on Israel in the world and what are they doing over there? When's the temple going to be built? And um, all of this. And my question is, are they following all his rules? Are they doing everything he says? And, and I don't think I don't think so because most most of them, not all of them. But as far as the the country that the UN and the United States recognize is Israel, they, to a large part, are a political secular organization, and they do follow Talmudic principles, things found in the uh, Kabbalah and things like that. They're not just going solely on the Word of God. They've got some traditions of man, just like the rest of us. But it is an interesting topic, and it's one worth studying to to determine who is Israel. Because so many of us, unless you've studied it and checked it out, you probably are under the perception that it's this bloodline lineage, and uh, that that's what is making you a, quote, Jew or not a Jew. I've had a lot of people through the years tell me things like, Matt, 
We've got to support Israel. We must support them. And when they say that, I think what they're talking about is supporting the uh, current nation of Israel who uh, made a poor choice in their flag when they began and chose the star of Rimfram, which was not biblical. Um, they should have put the menorah on that flag. That was biblical. It makes sense. But they didn't. And so that's your, kind of your first clue that something is awry. There is, you know, just look at the flag. That You know, they got the color, I believe. Blue is correct on there. But um, I don't believe that star is, uh, is a, a good thing. So anyway, when they say support Israel, I believe they're talking about the country, the policies of modern-day Israel. Um, and, and I can't necessarily go there and, and do that blindly because it's a, it's a political entity. Israel is you and I. And so when I say, when someone says support Israel, can I do that? Yeah, I can support uh, the people that are pursuing the commands of the Father. Yes, that is spiritual, true Israel. That's the one that matters. So there may be a bunch of stuff that happens. You may see them build the temple. You know, and I also challenge you to study that principle out. You know, is, the, is that third temple that we see, is that going to be built by human hands or God's hands? I challenge you to, to research that. Excuse me, research that and see what your conclusion on the matter is. And there's a lot of interesting scriptures about that, um, you know, that say, um, basically, you know, who is man to think that he can build God a temple? And, you know, I mean, I think there's, there's a good point there, you know. Uh, who are we to think that we could build him a temple? And there are lots of things said about using hewn stones and, you know, about not using hewn stones, about using uncut natural stones, basically the way God made them to build things. And I think you got to look at things like that, you know. So, and the images that I've already seen of the altar that they made, it had cut stones on it. And I believe that uh, the Bible clearly says that none of that was supposed to be built with cut stones. It was all supposed to be hewn, uh, unhewn, just the, just the way you find them in nature. But I do believe, for sure, that this temple is going to be built with human hands. And um, mostly it's, it's going to set up the um, the Antichrist to come and uh, perform the abomin abomination of desolation on this altar. But that's a whole other topic. Another thing to think about is, since we are Israel, I also believe that Yeshua made it clear that our bodies are the temple. That they are, that our flesh is indeed the tabernacle. And if you go back and you look at the tabernacle in the wilderness, it was this tent covered with animal skins, or if you will, flesh, just like our human bodies, is a tabernacle covered in flesh. It's mobile, and just like that original tabernacle was. So... Anyway, I'm kind of digressing rapidly out of control, I guess. But, but just keep in mind that Israel that you see on TV, that you hear so much in the news about Israel and Palestine, that that is not true Israel. True spiritual Israel are his people scattered across the planet. He is going to Exodus... A greater exodus than we've ever seen before. Such a great of exodus that it'll make the first one look like chump change. It'll be incredible. 
So that's what I'm looking forward to, is the day when he calls all of his spiritual people to the promised land. That's what we need to be ready for. That's what you need to get prepared for. You want to be a part of that spiritual Israel. You want to be a part of the people who follow his commands. Another Bible verse I'll end on is when Yeshua is quoted and he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Once again, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's how we show our Father that we love him. Just like children show their parents they love and respect them when they honor and do their wishes. That shows the mom and dad that the kid loves them, trusts them. So I challenge you today to, to read your Bible, search the scriptures, check these things out. Don't just listen to people and hear them tell you things and then just go, oh, well, that's it. No, think for yourself. The Father gave you a brain. He gave you eyes. He gave you ears. He wants you to use it, process it. Don't, don't rely on men or women to tell you what to think, how to think. Research it on your own. See if they're true. Go home, as Zach Bauer says, go home, read your Bible.